Nicely done. Good and professional. Hello, you're watching Talk Silent with me, Jonathan Hines, and my guests this evening, Neshla Avey and Mike Andros Zayas. Now, you may have heard that vinyl records, yes, proper old records, are making a comeback, and the music industry is once again demanding vinyl. So, no need to be nostalgic about vinyl anymore. Forget MP3 downloads. You can now own proper vinyl copies of your records once again. Let's take a trip to the biggest vinyl pressing plant in Europe, in the northern Dutch town of Haarlem, uh, where 7.5 million vinyl records will be pressed out this year for some top names in the music industry. In the last year, the staff number at the plant has gone from 50 to 110 employees and could press as many as 8, 9 or 10 million records this year. So Mike and Neshla, will you be getting back into the groove? <laughs> this sounds very exciting. I was always very passionate about the old vinyls like LPs and singles that again as a kid um, I was raised to understand and go out and buy long before the CD thing took over, of course. And yeah, I definitely like putting on an LP and that and watching the needle just sort of go down and run its way around the record. Yeah, I, I grew up with that technology. I won't even try to guess how many hundreds <laughs> you've got at home. I had a very big collection of LPs mm. and singles as well. <laughs> yes. And uh, Neshla, how do you? What's your reaction to this uh, item? Yeah, like you, uh, I, I remember uh, buying the old vinyls when I, I used to, uh, as a teenager, work in the supermarkets at the weekend. Oh. And on mm. the way home, I'd walk to the bus stop, and there used to be this record shop always calling you, oh, so yeah. you'd uh, buy various things. But my husband loves. Uh, vinyl and mm. he's, he's still I always say he's old-fashioned but he, he just says the sound's so much better and he enjoys getting the old LPs out you know and uh, mm. playing vinyl. And it actually explains you know scientifically and technically exactly how it's done. Galvanic baths these are used to make copies of the master. A thin layer of nickel sticks to the grooves of the master through a process known as electroforming. When this is peeled away it forms a precise negative of the original disc then a cutting room here, uh, and there's another picture which I shall uh, show in a moment. Digital audio is mastered for vinyl and transferred to analog. Rhinus Hooning, Record Industries Head of Audio and Quality Control, watches the vibrations of a diamond stylus cut a groove on a copper disc. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we've got some pictures here. I don't know if you can see those pictures. And then one more to show you in a moment. Um, Far too scientific for me. <laughs> there you go. Yes, and then we've got the uh, last one here. And I don't expect you can read the print there from where you're sitting, so I shall uh, uh, explain that a bit in a moment. Uh, it's a steam boiler PVC. It's heated in extruder and then shaped into a puck, which is pressed by squeezing it at a pressure of 150 bar against the nickel negatives known as stampers. Records typically come in black, but this disc will be gold covered. Mm. <laughs> so there you go. I don't know if you, I should imagine you already knew all that, uh, Mike. Um, bits and pieces. Um, yeah, a gold disc does sound very glamorous appearance wise. I've certainly learned in history about some of the rare records that were classified as acetates which were generally made of a metal disc and coated in the black plastic. But the rumours were, from some people I knew, if you played them possibly maybe two, three, four times on an old stylus, it would blunt the needle pretty quickly. So obviously the, the normal ones that are 100% plastic through and through, the stylus will last a lot longer. Oh, right. And so why do you think vinyl's making a comeback? Even, even our youngest stars are now going to be available again on vinyl. Well, I think it's really encouraging. Sometimes trends do turn full circle. They can disappear for a few years and then come back. But I, I think deep down inside, the knowledge of the old LPs and singles never went away because they are always obtainable. You can walk into any charity shop and there's the old 45s and the 33s, as I say everywhere around. So they've never 100% died. No. What, what just happened is that, again, it was an idea that was shelved for a little bit and they discontinued them. But there was always hope they'd come back, which now there is. And recently, since the tragic death of David Bowie, I mean, there's LP vinyls of him now being reissued, records he was making in the late 1960s. 
But of course, you know, years ago, to discover more obscure things or to discover certain records, you would have had to have physically trawled through record stores. Now, of course, things just pop up on YouTube. Exactly. Um, mm. And you're, you, you find yourself discovering things which were big in the 70s or 80s, mm. and, but you're only just discovering them for the first time now, thanks to YouTube. Or in my yeah. particular case, on YouTube, I discover things that pop up mm. which were very, very big in the States, maybe yeah. 30 or 40 years ago but they weren't known here. And here's me discovering them for the first time 30 or 40 years later, but they weren't known in the UK. Well, there was a Northern yeah. Soul record that I only discovered back in late September, and it was about a 1967 recording, which at the time maybe didn't work out for them, and it got re-released in 1971 and yeah. actually dated that year, and it was called At the Top of the Stairs by the Formations. Uh -huh. And I absolutely loved this record, oh, yes, I and it grew it. on me. And I just couldn't believe it, and I really want to get hold of one of the vinyls of right. it, definitely. Well, if anybody has uh, got a copy of that or knows that one, then uh, <laughs> uh, email in or contact uh, uh, Mike on um, SoundCloud, on uh, YouTube, um, or, of course, uh, Twitter. Uh, Mike is a, a reluctant uh, Twitter, a tweeter, <laughs> but you are on Twitter. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm a reluctant one as well, because you have to be brief on Twitter, don't you? And I don't do That's brief. That's right. Me too. <laughs> yeah, I like to go into details, give half the chance. You do. I do. Now, here's something that, which might require a lot of um, detail. To conclude, we're talking reincarnation in China and the Dalai Lama. The communist Chinese government has been accused by some of trying to gain control over Tibetan Buddhism and, of course, the Tibetan culture uh, and region is often seen to be persecuted and controlled unfairly by the Chinese state in Beijing. Beijing has published its list of 870 authentic living Buddhas in an effort, it says, to inform the Chinese population about true and authentic ones related to the Dalai Lama and Rinpoches, that means precious ones, so that charlatans and fakes don't make a quick buck from false claims that they are related to the monks of Tibet and the lineage uh, of the Dalai Lama himself. Beijing is attempting to officialize reincarnation as a government policy to avoid frauds, it says. However, some argue that it's an attempt by central government in Beijing to gain control over Tibetan Buddhism after the death of the current Dalai Lama, who is 80 years old. The 80-year-old Tibetan current Dalai Lama is the 14th reincarnation of the original 15th century abbot. Increasing numbers of Chinese are going over now to Buddhism. Now, this is one to get your head around, isn't it, Nashla? <laughs> yes. <laughs> are you any clearer? Yeah. No, I mean, I, I totally believe in reincarnation, but I don't believe, you know, you'd be the, the, the same thing each time. We're here to learn lessons, so each time we come back, we don't necessarily go back into being a, a Buddhist monk for, of, over and over again. We'd be doing something else, but I don't feel you can do any uh, you control over it. Mm. So uh, it's quite an interesting subject in the so way. So the that's Chinese, the, the communist government in China, are trying to um, officialize uh, reincarnation or get control over <laughs> over reincarnation. Is that is that what is that what's happening here? It sounds like it, but to me, how can you how can you make control? Because uh, I believe you make that decision before you come back again. So it's nothing to do with what's going on down here. Mm. We are we are learning lessons, um, and once we've learned it, then we we come back to do something else. I mean, I personally do subscribe to reincarnation, but obviously many people uh, don't. Uh, I'm open to what it says here. It says the, uh, the existing Dalai Lama is the 14th reincarnation of the revered 15th century abbot. Now, how can they know it to that precise figure? Is, well, that, is that relevant? Yes, I mean, uh, um, you can uh, find out uh, what you've been doing by um, past life regression so people can do uh, go for regression and then you can find out what you've been doing in past lives um, and that's quite popular and more and more people are finding that quite fascinating now but it's only normally if there's a reason for it. I mean, at the end of the day, we've had that life. We don't need to know um, what's going on, but some, a lot of people are interested. And there's a lot of books about it out there now so that you can find out a little bit more about it because it is um, being understood a bit more. And I think because people are beginning to remember things or, or going back to past, uh, as I say, mm. having a regression, finding out something, and then you can check in the history books, finding it's true. So, you know, it's, it's quite interesting. So when they say about 870 authentic um, uh, Rinpoches, that Rinpoche means precious one, 
I mean, that figure there is very precise as well, isn't it? 870 <laughs> yes. that the Chinese government have uh, identified. Well, they're obviously keeping a lot of records, aren't they, over there? Because it's not the sort of thing that uh, people would normally do. But I'm guessing, you know, they, they're obviously, as I say, keeping some records uh, and checking everybody. Well, many argue they want to be ready for when the, Dal the current Dalai Lama passes from this life because he's 80 years old. Um, so, uh, Mike, do you believe in reincarnation? How do you feel about it? What's your opinion of reincarnation in this story? Well, I, I believe that there could be certainly some elements of truth in it, though I couldn't 100% say because I'm a, I am a bit unsure about it, really. But I have probably what you'd call stronger beliefs towards the resurrection hope that people that aren't here now can have a resurrection chance in the future when mm -hmm. the Bible stories turn around in their ways and revelation reveals itself and there is a promise of a paradise earth where people can rewalk again and be mm. remembered. And that could be like a form, in, in a sense, of reincarnation. Anybody from famous celebrities to people that weren't known, they do have a chance of coming back. I, I, found, that title I, ex believe. Yeah, I found that title extraordinary, a verified, verified living Buddha. That's almost like <laughs> saying a verified living Jesus, isn't it? Yeah. I, 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 well, when I was still at school, I, I did know somebody who flew out to India and he claimed he'd actually met a god over there. Right. Yeah, somebody who claimed he was a god and this guy I was at school with said right. he'd seen him. Yeah. Interesting, we've covered a lot of ground today, haven't we? Many things, as always, and unfortunately the time's against us, is all we've got time for this evening. My thanks to this evening's guests, Neshla and Mike. Talk Silent returns tomorrow, and I'll be back with you again next Tuesday uh, at the same time. Thanks for watching. All the best. Goodbye.